What does use strict do? This is one of the first questions I ask in an interview. It's quite a nice icebreaker. It's a simple question. I kind of expect you to know the answer to this one. And even though it's a simple question, you can still impress the interviewer by showing a deep understanding of the keyword and its effects. So what is strict mode? Strict mode allows you to place a program or a function in what's called a strict operating context. I'm going to explain what this means with a series of examples, but in a nutshell, it makes debugging easier. So code errors that would otherwise have been ignored or would have failed silently will now generate errors or throw exceptions. This alerts you sooner to problems in your code and directs you quickly to their probable source. So the first thing you should talk about is just really how to switch it on. How do you actually enable strict mode in a JavaScript file? And one of the ways you do that is to actually type in the string, use strict and put it at the top of your JavaScript file. Now, if you get asked in the interview to write it out, and sometimes I do ask a student to write it out, remember, don't write it out like use strict. It is not a special keyword called use and a special keyword called strict. It is a string. Now, you might ask, why is it a string? That seems a bit strange, really. And the answer is actually quite simple. When use strict, when the feature was first thought up and implemented, older browsers didn't support it. Only the newer browsers supported it. So if they decided to use the keyword use and the keyword strict, when this file was loaded up in an older browser, a browser that, that didn't know about use strict, it would have failed. So what they did was they just put it as a string. So if an older browser read this file, it would just say, oh, there's a string at the top. It's not really doing anything and fine, I'll just ignore it. In a newer browser, when it sees the keyword use strict, it then knows to turn itself into strict mode operating context. So this is one way in which you can tell JavaScript to treat your code in strict mode. Doing it this way will apply to all of the code within this file. But there is one other way. So if you were perhaps working on legacy JavaScript code, very, very old JavaScript code. I, I doubt seriously that you'll actually be in this situation anymore because Ustrict has been in place for a very long time now. But just so you have complete knowledge, it is actually possible to only apply strict mode to parts of your code by adding Ustrict to the top of a function block. Then anything underneath there is in strict mode. Anything outside of there is in non-strict mode. Right, so now I've shown you how to switch it on. What's the point? What is the point of Ustrict mode? And really, what does it do? So one of the first things is that in use strict mode, using a variable before it's been defined now causes an error. So without strict mode, assigning a value to an undeclared variable, so the variable asim has not been declared anywhere in this file before, automatically creates a global variable with that name. Now in JavaScript, there's always a global object and that's where all the global variables and global functions go. In a browser, the global object is window. But if you're using this inside node, the global object is an object called global. So by just declaring asim is equal to one, what we've actually done is we've created a global variable, a global property on the global variable window called asim and we've assigned the value of one to it. So you can see in the console, it actually prints out, this is the line that it's printing out, so it's printing out the one. Okay, awesome. Why is that a bad thing? Why is that annoying? Let me show you a specific example as to when that can be incredibly frustrating. So let's imagine in, in my application, I've declared a variable called the val. So I've declared it properly using the var keyword at the top of my file, and I've assigned it the value of zero. And then later on in my application, I then decide to change the value of my the val variable to one. But I make a silly mistake. Instead of typing the val, I type the val and I miss out the e. And then finally, I use my variable the val in an if statement. Since I think I've set it to one, or I'm pretty sure I've said to set it to one, I would expect it to print out hello. But actually, hello doesn't get printed out. So 
I then spent ages trying to figure out what's going on. I then figure out it's actually a syntax error. I meant to have set the val. And then I finally get my application to work and to print hello. So we've all been hit by these issues before. Many times they're incredibly frustrating. So if we were to have used the use strict mode, let me go to the top. And then I'll refresh. So now it gives us an error. It gives us an error because you cannot use a variable without first declaring it with var first. So I did declare it with var at the top. I thought I was using the val here, but I wasn't. So it thinks I'm trying to declare a new variable called the val without using the var keyword. So it gives us an error. And this is really useful because this tells me upfront that I've got a problem with the syntax in my application and I'm not going to waste hours, if not days, trying to track down this problem where hello is not getting printed. So then here I might just type the val. That's fine. And then press refresh and the application runs as I expect it to run. By forcing you to only use variables that have been declared with the var keyword, this prevents accidental globals and head scratchy syntax error problems like the one I've just demonstrated to you. So another feature of uStrict is it stops you from using words that are reserved for future versions of JavaScript. So let me give you an example. So if I do var let is equal to one, let me refresh and that's fine. That's not causing any problems. But then if I add uStrict to the top, you can see now it gives me another error. It says unexpected strict mode reserved word. So this var let. The reason it's giving me this error is because the keyword let is actually reserved for future versions of JavaScript. And in fact, it's currently in use in the ECMAScript 6 version of JavaScript. Another feature of uStrict is you cannot delete functions, variables, or function arguments in uStrict mode. So let me show you. So normally, if you just typed var foo is equal to 1, and then I tried to delete foo, refresh, JavaScript doesn't complain about that. Similarly, if I created a function called moo and I tried to delete that function, so in non-strict mode, you can also delete a function. But when we go into use strict mode, you can see there it doesn't let us delete variables. And again, it doesn't let us delete functions. And another feature of use strict is it doesn't let you delete arguments to functions. So for instance, let's take function moo. If we try to delete arg, there we go. So now again, it doesn't let us delete arguments to functions as well. And another thing I'm going to talk about is the keyword eval. In use strict mode, it makes the eval keyword a little bit safer. So in non use strict mode, you can do things like use the word eval as a variable or as a function, and it's perfectly happy with that. In use strict mode, this now causes an error. Also, it makes the actual act of calling eval a bit safer. If you know eval, what it does, it lets you evaluate JavaScript expressions by just passing in a string. So it lets you execute just arbitrary bits of JavaScript code. If I did var a is equal to one, this then executes var a is equal to one. But in non use strict mode, the variable a leaks out of the eval expression. So if I then wanted to do you can see there, it's printing out the value of a, which is actually created or defined within the eval block. So you can imagine there may be situations where this can cause security issues or just a pollution of your own namespace. So this can cause problems if you perhaps are depending on a variable called a, or perhaps you declare a variable called a above as to two, and you expect it to actually print out two at the bottom, but you didn't realize that in the eval block, it's something is actually redeclaring the variable a to one. So these are some of the problems which you can have with the eval function in non use strict mode. But when we go to use strict, what happens is that the any variables you define inside the eval code only exist within the eval code and don't leak out. So when you print console log a here, it's actually printing out the value of a um, outside the eval block. And if even if you didn't have a, it would just say a is not defined. So again, it just makes the eval a bit safer to use. It is a very, very powerful feature of JavaScript, but also a very dangerous feature of JavaScript. So you should treat it with the respect it deserves.